Hey y'all, I'm Carolina Tony. Thank you for stopping by my channel. If you're here for the first time, be sure to go down and subscribe before you leave. Today our adventure begins in Jamestown, Virginia, site of the first permanent English settlement in the New World. Today we're going to explore the first settlement or recreation of the first settlement, what the settlers encountered when they first arrived on the shores as well as the Indians that lived in the area. And we'll get to that, but right after this station, identification. The ships departed London on December 20th, 1606. By February 1607, they were passing through the Canary Islands. Arrived in Virginia April the 26th, 1607, and finally landed on Jamestown May the 13th, 1607. Check this out, a fireplace on the ship. We'll know our history and our culture. I'd like to share it with you too. Come inside to learn more. This would have been a one-room single-family home where a husband and wife and children would have lived. John Smith described them as dry, warm, smoky houses. And I imagine he called them smoky because the fire would be in the center and vent it out the top. Probably did not have trouble with mosquitoes on the inside. Ring is the main tool for actually making the canoe. So I have to put in. Um, you can swing axes on it all day, and on this small, um, you might actually make it faster by cutting it with an axe. Um, but your average canoe holds 20 men, is probably roughly the size of that oak. The largest holds 40 men at a time. And on top of making it, you'd be nice to dry and season the log as well mm -hmm. um, and save time same e save effort if not time so fire would be the main tool. Um, and we're kind of just opening the walls so here is a finish dug out canoe as he said rather than swinging an axe at it all day they would use fire to help hollow it out and speed the process as well as to dry the wood out that there are some of these dugout canoes that would hold up to 40 men.
Because during the day, light hours, you're going to be working outside. So uh, the rings of, uh, of uh, wood and, and stone represent the cooking areas. I'm underneath the Ramada. If it rains or snows, get bad weather. My job as a female is to teach my children. And I'm not going to stand here watching the snowfall. We got things to do. We got uh, cord we got to make. And we need cord like this you see here. Uh, to hold basically everything together. If you look at the houses, look at my structure. There's no nails, no screws, no bolts. Everything's held together with cords. So we're going to teach these kids, not when they're teens, we're teaching them when they're three, four years old how to make cord. You're already teaching them all about the nuts and the seeds and the berries and the bugs, everything out in the woods because little kids like to put things in their mouth. So you got to teach them. I got all kinds of berries over here and plants that if you eat, you can get sick, especially ones on the end. That's pokeberry. A whole bunch of those can kill a child. So you got to teach them real young what you can and cannot touch. So you're out there every day looking for wood for the fires. You're out there looking for food. So mom's teaching them and they build lesson upon lesson and grass by the water. There's all kinds of sticks. Mom will separate these. This is a dogwood and it has all kinds of fibers. So a pile of these sticks, when you get down to it, can make a basket like that from a pile of sticks. So you gotta learn who's gonna teach you? Mom. Mom's the teacher. The boys, uh, when they get a little bigger, five, six years old, they start working more and more with dad. Dad with his hunting and fishing skills, being a warrior. So this is pretty much what Pocahontas would have been dressed like during the cooler months. That I know. He's fanning the fire.
Colonists all lived in the fort at first for protection and as a base for exploration and economic activities. Even those of a higher status needed to share housing. The building has a loft and two chambers with one more than one person living in them. This building represents quarters for gentlemen Adventurers and Officers of the Virginia Company. This is the governor's bedchamber. This was a private space that only a few invited people could ever see. And this is the, the governor's parlor. This is a fairly private room seen only by a few key people in the colony. It was a place for leisure and personal correspondence. 1665, I finally became a free man. Two years later, I bought 50 acres of land near here. I was lucky. After Bacon's Rebellion, new laws made it hard for anybody from Africa to have the same opportunities as me. Most are enslaved their entire lives and live crammed together in plantation houses like this one. Gotta get back to my farm. Go on in and take a look around. The stairs in the governor's house probably hired, probably housed members of his household and his staff. When Lord De La War came as governor of Virginia in 1610, he brought people as members of his household to help run his new government. This included educated clerks who may have shared a room like this one. This would have been the hall of the governor's house. It's a semi-public space where the governor could hold meetings or dinners with leaders of the Virginia colony or important visitors. Within the first couple of months, they get on to reasonably good terms with the mm -hmm. natives. Now, the very first day they get off the ships, they get yeah. attacked down at right. what's now Virginia Beach. Mm -hmm. And when they first set, start setting up shop on Jamestown Island, they get attacked again. Uh, but over the next couple of months, as they start exploring the area, doling out the political gifts and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, they kind of calm the situation down and they get on to reasonably good terms with the natives. Um, and maintain that for the better part of the next two and a half years. Now, the mm -hmm. thing to bear in mind is there isn't any one group here. Mm -hmm. It's pretty diverse, so that makes this, the political situation very complex. You know, Powhatan controls a chieftain that consists of over 30 tribes, but he has varying levels of control over each of those tribes. Some are, you know, entirely, you know, subservient to him. Some have a lot of autonomy. Uh, the Chickahominy are smack in the middle of Powhatan's chiefdom and uh, independent. They you know, don't answer to Powhatan. And then you've got well within the reach of the English, even uh, some of them on the waters of the Chesapeake Bay. The Susquehannocks, the Potawatomis, the Monacan, um, who are, uh, you know, none of them are under Powhatan's control, and at least in the case of the Susquehannocks and the uh, Monacan, they're bitter enemies of Powhatan. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, the political situation with the natives in the region is, is always going to be complex. But after the first couple of months, the next couple two and a half years or so, they get along reasonably well with most of them. Mm -hmm. But by the end of 1609, relations start deteriorating pretty fast. Things break down eventually into open war uh, between the English and Powhatan by the end of 
over my shoulder is a reproduction of the Godspeed, one of the ships that the settlers came over to the New World to found the first permanent English settlement, Jamestown. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to go down below. Give me a big old thumbs up. If you hadn't subscribed yet, be sure to do so if you will. Also, be sure to share with your family and friends. But for now, y'all have a good day.